This is Off Topic on the Chorus Radio Network. Back again for another edition of Off Topic with the Scott Brothers. I'm JD. I'm Drew. And I'm Jonathan. This week we're talking about the flu shot. Is it a good idea? Did you know that less than a third of Canadians get the flu shot despite it being so widely available? So we'll tell you why coming up. Yeah, who likes needles? And we're also going to delve into whether or not it's okay to cry or get emotional at work, kind of like what Jonathan does every day with us. (laughs) Can you separate your personal life from your work life uh, when things are getting rough? Yeah, but I want to start our shows off with something a little bit different. I want to do a round table here. I want to find out from you guys what's happened this week. Anything interesting. Something that happened to me was kind of weird. I was flying into town. We're filming in Atlanta and of course there's a train at the airport that takes you from the one terminal to the other. And I I gave up my seat. To, to, there was an elderly gentleman that was standing there and so I, I stood up to give him my seat and a young guy jumped in and took the chair. And the, the train was full. There's nowhere else to sit. And so I, I said to the fellow, like, oh, I was, I was giving the seat to this gentleman. And the kid said, that's old school thinking, and he wouldn't get back up. So I thought, no, it's not old school thinking. It's not being a jerk. Did you grab him by the I, shirt yeah. collar and throw him off the I was going to say, I can, I can tell you how to fix that situation pretty easily. Well, I, I'm <laughs> not going to go getting physical with somebody. And, you know, the, the older fellow was saying, you know, don't, don't worry about it. Or anything. But myself, I, has that happened to either of you guys? I assume. Well, yeah, but it, it, and it happened. I saw that on a, a train. I was in Calgary on the... Uh, on, on, or on a bus, rather, and it was a pregnant woman. And so she was very pregnant. I mean, I was almost expecting her to have the kid there on the train. She was so pregnant. And I got out of my seat to give her the seat, and two teenagers just popped in there and, and, and took it. Now, they did. When I called them out and I said, hey, you guys, I got out of that seat for the pregnant lady. They did give it to her, but still, like, what are you thinking? By the way, I, I don't generally call people out and call them, hey, pregnant lady. Yeah, uh, that <laughs> I don't also like that. But that, actually, that brings up a good point, too, because I've seen it where, you know, you, you go to the, the shopping malls and there's the handicapped parking stalls. Um, and it's one thing. I've seen people parking in the handicapped spots, but they also have pregnant parking as well for expecting mothers. Mm-hmm. And I've seen people who are obviously not pregnant, not expecting. I've seen guys, unless there's some radical surgery I'm <laughs> unaware of, that have parked in there. And they flat out said to me, like, no, that's it's ridiculous, you know? Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the one thing that bothers me, though, when you're at a, a, a mall and they've literally taken, like, for, for the, uh, the the pregnant spots and a f- and then there, there are the special, um, the, the, the handic- handicap spots, when they take the first, like, 30 spots or something ridiculously long and and take all of those for, for those vehicles, I don't think that's fair. I don't think there would ever be that many people that would be needing those spots at one time. I think that... Well, I've been in some complexes where they're always empty. You know, maybe some, like, strip malls and stuff like that where they're, they're always empty. So, I don't know. I, I know for myself, I did commercial construction, so I know what the ratios the codes, are. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the code actually requires us to do a certain ratio for the development. Um, and, and we're stuck. There's nothing that we can do about it. I, tr- I take the contractor spots at Home Depot, uh, so you know Jonathan's the contractor, obviously, you. and and uh, JD's definitely the handy one as well. I prefer to be the realtor, but I will take your contractor spots at Home Depot. Well, then you know what, you're one of those guys. JD, what did you find has happened to you this week? Uh, let's see what's been going on this week. Um, well, also on on flights, I, I always find this really amazing. You're on a plane with all these people from a city that has millions of people on in it, and you're sitting next to somebody that you know. I, I, I was sitting next to a person I know very well. Of all the gin joints in all the world. Exactly. Yeah. I, thought, I mean, it is such a small world. And to, to just randomly run into someone you know like Who that. Who was it? It was... Uh, Ex-girlfriend? Actually, no. It was the uh, production manager from Property Brothers. Oh, Scott. Uh, Scott. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Have you ever had that, though, where you've randomly bumped into an ex-girlfriend or something like or that? Or someone that you, you didn't want to talk to on uh-huh. a plane? And yes, it uh, happens. Oh, not on a plane, but uh, when I'm in a city uh, where I'm expecting not to run into somebody, yes. <laughs> Awkward. Awful. Well, I, I definitely want to bring up something that's a, a sour point for a lot of people. What do you think of all the, the Robert Ford issues right now, the big Robert Ford debacle, oh, well, where this... he's admitting that he was smoking crack p- cocaine. But, uh, I mean, it's I didn't realize because I was drunk at the time. Yeah, that, that's what, an excuse. excuse. So this is what I think. You know, person, Somebody said to me the other day, hey, they can't do anything about it because it was a video taken a long time ago. You have to catch the person in the act. That's not the, prop, that's not the point. The point yeah. is, do you want somebody who is so reckless that they're even putting themselves in a situation where they are smoking crack and where they are getting drunk beyond control? No, I don't want that person being the leader of a community. Well, that I, I can see how upset Rob must be because – 
if you can't count on your drug dealer not to turn you in uh, and, and publish a video, then what, what I mean, I, I, think, I just think it? it's ridiculous with all the uh, the flack that has come out of this situation and and he's staying in. Right. I mean, he, he's not going anywhere. He's still going to be around for a while. I, I just find it frustrating. And then also the lies that came from the beginning, and then the, the, the backtracking saying, oh, well, I just didn't realize because I was drunk. Well, this, this is the first time, you know, here filming in, in the U.S., this is the first time that Americans have taken an interest in Canadian politics <laughs> because the Rob Ford <laughs> thing is all over everything. TMZ well, has did, something on it. Did you guys see the video that has come out since that? No. Okay, so he has another uh, issue now because another video was released where he was threatening to kill somebody over this whole situation. Oh, this, really? Yeah. This, this, so, this guy was voted in. <laughs> yeah, he uh, it was like on a tirade and he was all upset and so on. Well, this yeah. is basically the same as people who are, are, you know, teenagers that are posting videos of doing risque things or, or too sexy photos that they shouldn't be doing. And that you don't just don't turn the camera on or don't be in a public spot when you're doing these things and you're going to keep yourself out of trouble. Yeah, I don't know. It's There's a lot of crazy stuff in the news. Every time I turn on the TV, there's another wild story. We also had a ton of great comments from fans, everybody asking, you know, you know, can we get more Scott Brothers um, on the radio? And so we said, you know, actually, why don't we do this? Why don't you guys send us more ideas for topics? Uh, that's, wh- that's how we're formulating our show. Basically, you guys are our producers. You're telling us what to chat about. Well, we had a few people tweeting last week about health-related issues, working out and healthy eating. Well, something that I want to talk about is actually the flu shot. I mean, this is in the health realm. After we take a short break, when we come back, we're going to have Dr. Joseph Kwong, and he's a specialist in public health, and he's going to tell us whether or not it's a good idea this season to get a flu shot. Don't forget, you can always hit us up on our website, thescottbrothers.com, or on social media. I'm at Mr. Silver Scott. We have at Mr. J.D. Scott and at Mr. Drew Scott on Facebook and Twitter. We'll be right back in a moment with more Off Topic with the Scott Brothers on the Chorus Radio Network. It's Off Topic with the Scott Brothers on the Chorus Radio Network. Thanks again for joining us for Off Topic with the Scott Brothers. I'm Drew. I'm JD. And I'm Jonathan. As the cool weather approaches, I'm sure you've been hearing all the ads on the radio, seeing them on TV in the bus shelters. Well, when it's not Property Brothers ads that you're seeing everywhere, maybe you're seeing the ads for how urgent it is to get a flu shot. And I know that doctors are also telling you it's important to get the flu shot to prevent yourself from getting sick. That's right. But, you know, there are no guarantees when you get the flu shot. You know, if you if you get, get the shot, you still could get the flu, which I actually had last year. And we're joined today by Dr. Jeff Kwong, a public health doctor, to talk to us about some of the uh, issues with the flu shot, the benefits of the flu shot, and maybe debunking some of those theories out there. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. So, yeah, big thing, you know, everyone says... Oh, well, I, well, some people don't like needles, and some people... I actually saw one of the latest ads down here where we are, so I don't know if this is the same in Canada at this point, but you can actually get uh, the flu shot. Um, it's an inhaler that you can take now. Can you do that yet? That's right. Um, there's a new uh, vaccine out. It's called Flu Mist, which is given uh, as a nasal spray, but it's um, most recommended for children uh, age 2 to 17, uh, for adults, the, the regular uh, flu shot given as a needle is probably still the best. Okay. And, I mean, J.D. is kind of a child, so you know, yeah. maybe that would still work with him. What are some of the biggest sort of, uh, cons- not conspiracy theories, but there, <laughs> there are a lot of challenges that some people say about getting the flu? Because, I mean, technically, when you get an uh, 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 immunization shot or something like that, you're, you're technically putting the virus in your system, right? Well, it's, um, it's actually um, sort of the virus particles. So it's not the live virus, um, except for flu mist, which is actually a live virus. But the, the regular flu shot is actually just like bits of the virus particles that are being injected. So it helps to train your immune system, but it's actually impossible from getting uh, impossible to get influenza from the flu shot because um, it's not a live virus that you're getting. Oh, okay. See, I didn't realize that. I thought it was a, a small dose of the live, live virus, but it was a small enough dose that it helps your immune system learn how to, to attack it. That's so I right. saw the stat. So 10 to 20 percent of Canadians get influenza. 20,000 people are hospitalized because of the flu and 4,000 die. Uh, is that every year, according to Toronto Public Health? That's right. So on average, those are the average numbers. And, uh, you know, some years 
where it's a more severe flu season, it could be higher than that. And some years, if it's a lighter flu season, it could be lower than that. But so This is something that I, I think about. You know, I, I don't take drugs for everything, anything, you know, unless I absolutely have to, even, you know, like a Tylenol or an Advil, something, unless I really feel that I really have to, I prefer not to put anything in my system. Um, and it has happened in the past, you know, where there will be some sort of a vaccine and then they discover, you know, 30 years down the road, oh, you know what, that actually isn't good for you for X, Y, Z reason. Well, I, for myself, I'm probably in the lowest affected group as far as the flu goes because I'm not, I'm not really a big risk in the sense that I'm young, I'm healthy, um, I do take care of myself every other way. So is it bad for me? Because I've gone several years in a row without getting the flu shot, and you know, then I got pressured in by my friends and coworkers to get it. But I'm in a low-risk category, so should I get it? Yeah, well, I think it's a good idea. And I, I think the issue is that, you know, it, it, there is benefit for you from, you know, preventing, like you can prevent the risk of yourself getting influenza. But I think you need to think about those around you. So if you have any contact at all with anyone who's in a high risk group, so people who are elderly, uh, very young children or people with any chronic uh, medical conditions, it's a good idea for you to get the flu shot so that you can, um, you know, not get sick and give it to somebody who's in a high risk group. Right. And I think a, a lot, sorry, just, I'll just say one more thing is that what's, what a lot of people don't realize is that up to one third of people who have influenza infection actually have no symptoms at all, um, mm-hmm. and, but they can still be spreading it. And so, I didn't know uh, that. They're carrier yeah. monkeys. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. I actually, I watched an interesting show uh, last week, and it wasn't about the flu shot, but it was about the uh, H1N1 vaccination and how there was all these relations now to narcolepsy. People who had been Im- immunized, especially children, uh, had developed narcolepsy after getting that immunization. So what's your opinion? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of effort put into the immunization for the flu, but like J.D. said, for these other issues and other viruses, um, is 4,000 like 4, people dying? That's a lot of people in Canada uh, from just the flu. But are there are these other issues that are even a bigger concern that we don't have as much of a focus on? Yeah. So the issue about the H1N1 vaccine and narcolepsy is something that's been, uh, it's current, it has been studied a bit in Europe. It seems to be, um, that vaccine that was used in Europe seems to be, um, there seems to be a relationship between the two. And uh, we haven't, um, we're, we're currently in the process of studying that in Canada. So we're working on that study at this moment and, you know, hopefully uh, we'll be able to give a more definitive uh, answer. We're not sure if it's related to um, the adjuvant that was used in the H1N1 vaccine that was used in Europe, which is slightly different from the one that was used in Canada, um, or if it's related to the the antigens or or what what was the, um, the you know the cause for the narcolepsy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's something that's you know I think that the, the jury's still out on that. I think we still need to do more studies to determine if they're truly is a risk. Um, well, okay. And I find, too, when these studies happen, you get, you know, 10 studies that go one way and 10 studies that say it's another way, and you have to sort of wade through that. And, yeah. and I think that's why every country as well has their own process for yeah. it. What What is the, the most effective time of year or, you know, well, actually, I guess the first thing I should check is, have you had your flu shot? Oh, definitely. And in the room here, J.D., have you had yours? I have not gone yet, but I will. And I did. Andrew, yeah. you, you and I went at the same time. I yeah. remember that you and I had ours done. So what's the best time of year to get it done? Well, I mean, you know, best time is, you know, in October, November, um, even December is okay, um, you know, before the flu season hits. And um, so, you know, still, we haven't hit flu season yet, although there have been some cases of influenza confirmed in, in and right. around Toronto already. Well, I think, it just in my opinion, I mean, I don't like to take a lot of, of shots or anything if I don't feel I really need it. But I do think that this is something that's valuable to take, especially if 4,000 people on average are dying in a year. But thank you very much, Dr. Kwong, for your time. We appreciate your insight. We have to take a short break. When we return, we're, ta- we're talking Google. And you know one day they are going to take over the world if they haven't already. And Or Apple, you know. They're, they're neck to neck, you know, in terms of how much power they have over the general populace. So be sure to connect with us on social media. I'm at Mr. Silver Scott. We have at Mr. Drew Scott and at Mr. J.D. Scott. Check out our website, thescottbrothers.com, and we'll be back right after these messages. You're listening to Off Topic with the Scott Brothers on the Chorus Radio Network. You're listening to Off Topic on the Chorus Radio Network. You're back with the Scott Brothers on Off Topic. I'm Drew. I'm Jonathan. 
And I'm JD. And we all know that technology, namely the internet, plays a huge role in our lives, especially with social media. And a good portion of our lives nowadays is lived online. Yeah, and so here's some food for thought. How, how do you guys feel, because I just read this and it's a little disturbing, that Google actually skims through your personal emails for target advertising. So if you ever notice, if you're in your Gmail account and say you sent, uh, say I sent a message to you, JD, and I said, um, hey, do you want to go listen to somebody? There's a guitarist playing, blah, blah, there's a band playing, blah, blah. Then you'll get targeted advertising that will show up, whether it's for concerts that are coming around or maybe for a music store, stuff like that. So they're actually skimming through. They've got software that's skimming through your personal emails to make sure that their advertisers are getting the best bang for their buck. Yeah, well, I, I think I've seen uh, stuff about this on Facebook actually today and over the past week. And it, to me, it's not a huge, it's not a huge deal. Like I. I I kind of expect that that's going on. Well, if it's stuff you're looking for, then that'd be fine. But what if you're in in an email, you're joking, and you're like, oh, yeah, I want to murder this guy. He's such a pain in the butt. Or or, I love porn, something or other. And then you start getting, like, knife sales. Yeah, exactly. I don't know about that. (laughs) But but I do know um, Microsoft jumped right on this, and they they launched a a website warning users about what Google's doing. Shocking. Keepyouremailprivate.com? Yeah, exactly. They're, They're... there's a lot of competition out there, and everybody is, you know, of course, on heightened privacy mode with everything that they're reading about what the NSA was doing and, and you know, snooping in on phone calls. Seems a lot like politics, doesn't it? it? It is a lot of politics. That's exactly what it is. I mean, myself, I have nothing to hide, so I don't, I don't really care one way or the other. I mean, personally, I kind of feel like if you're going to advertise something to me, I would much rather – like, I've had people that are advertising – you know, there will be something that comes up on the side banner for a feminine wash. Well, I don't really need a feminine wash. Oh, so. John. Oh, you do. Come on, let's. <laughs> but no, I, I, it makes sense to me. It's not often that I click on the ads, but if it's going to be advertising to me, it may as well be something that I possibly could use. Well, do you really think that there's such a thing as privacy on the Internet anymore? I, I really don't. I honestly, I think, like you had said, whatever you put out there, I think it's out there to the world. And even in your emails, now granted, your private emails that you're sending people, that's obviously not out to the world. But you have an agreement with, if it's Google or Outlook or whoever you're using, you have an agreement with them. And I think somewhere in all that writing, there is... They're allowed to, but to if, do this giving. if it was clear, because Google does say, if you read the fine print when you sign up for your Gmail account, they say in there that they have the right to skim through your emails. Every user should expect that the emails are going to be uh, going to be processed. If you if it was bold right in the beginning, if somebody said to you, "Yes, you can use our email service, but we're going to read everything that you post," would you sign up with them, or would you maybe look for? Somebody yeah, probably else? not. Yeah. Well, no, as I said before, I I kind of expect that that's what's happening these days. Okay. And T- take it out of that, then take it this way. So. You are in, in your office, for example, and you know someone in your office comes over to you and says, hey, I'm Arnold. Um, every phone call that you make, I'm going to listen in on it. Every uh, you know, thing that you say to your coworker, I'm going to listen in on that. I will say again, I expect that that's going to happen. I have worked for a number of companies over the years when I was a banker that you were told right from the beginning, everything that you say and do within the confines of this building will be listened to. And I guess as an employer, I mean, in, in a way... That's a good thing because then you're you're ensuring that whatever's said and whatever's done is sort of an extension of your brand when they're in the workspace. Obviously, it's not the same when they're at home. And this whole uh, thing with uh, Google, I mean, Facebook's been doing that for ages, like targeted marketing. I, that's not a brand new thing. Like uh, I've that's been true. getting those ads for what the last year or two. What are so, the ads so that then, you get? Oh, uh, I can't say. <laughs> so then, why if, if Google is making? billions of dollars off of this this ad revenue and the stuff that they're, they're targeting because they're skimming through your information to find out stats on what you like shouldn't they cut you a little piece of the pie shouldn't shouldn't maybe if you're going in and you're using the email and 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 you're the one who's providing all of the statistical information for them shouldn't you maybe get I a little I think stuff? maybe your piece of the pie is that you're not paying for the service right so it's a free service yeah well I guess <laughs> that makes sense well, I don't know. I, I just, I, it doesn't bother me. Honestly, if I, maybe now that I know more of this, I'm going to start posting the things I really want. Like I'll, I'll post Tesla, Tesla, Tesla in all my emails, and then maybe I'll get some good marketing or a, a sale price, buy one, get one free. Well, what, what would you <laughs> consider to be your preference then? If you look at something like Outlook, so that's Microsoft's big thing. Outlook, they do not skim through your emails. Gmail, so they, they skim say... through your emails. So which, what would you choose then of the two? Well, now this is something I don't know about Outlook. I mean, I I use Outlook, but I do have a Gmail account as well. I like with Gmail that it's a web-based account. Do you have a Hotmail account? I I do have a Hotmail account, which is now Outlook. That's right. That's what they're saying. So they're comparing Outlook Online to Gmail Online. Okay. I don't use the Outlook Online. I don't. I do still use my Hotmail once in a while, but uh, I use... uh... 
I mean, I use my Outlook. Um, we, we call it yeah, on your, your laptop, yeah, version. offline yeah. Uh, version the most. Yeah. So I guess it just comes down to. I mean, I can absolutely understand when people say it's an invasion of privacy and they don't want somebody. I can understand that. I understand that people like to have a little bit of privacy. I do value my personal life, my privacy. But um, you know, the thought of somebody skimming through. Uh, if, if it was just for targeted advertising, yes. But where does it stop? How, who, who monitors whether they stop at that? How do we know, you know, say prime example for us, you know, we're TV personalities, we're on TV. What's to prevent somebody with Gmail or with Google going in and, you know, getting personal information about us, about where we're going to be and, you know, personal information about where we live, things like that. It, does it not question whether or not somebody takes it too far? Uh, that's always a risk, though, I think, in any industry, because you have bank accounts. What's to say that a person at the bank isn't going to go take your personal information? I did have that, and, and so. um, somebody from the bank had actually called my per- my personal cell number, and they, they were proclaiming, hey, you know, love the show, do all these things, and I thought, how, how did this person get this info? They had gone into the banking system, and they exactly. pulled my... Per- it, it, totally not allowed. I know the bank doesn't allow that. No. Well, that that's one... Like, that's terrible that someone would do that, and they would lose their job for doing that but we got to switch gears here we want to head into a commercial break and when we come back we're talking about workplace matters is it ever okay to do this at the office don't forget to send us your thoughts on whether or not you believe there can be privacy on the internet and whether you'll be closing your gmail account after this discussion we've had on twitter i'm mr jd scott drew is mr drew scott and jonathan is mr silver scott that and more coming up on this weekend's edition of off topic with the scott brothers on the chorus radio network Now back to Off Topic on the Chorus Radio Network. Back on Off Topic with the Scott Brothers, I'm Drew. This is Jonathan. And I'm JD. So we're going to jump right into this one. Is it ever okay to show extreme emotions in the workplace or like cry in the workplace? (laughs) If you're an ugly crier, it's definitely not right. (laughs) I've known one or two of those. Um, I I don't know. I have a couple of different schools of thought of this. I think that people have the right to, to be themselves and everything, but... At the workplace, you know, I, I find that people love to bitch and complain about stuff, and and so if you're if your whole purpose is if you're bringing this into the workplace to bring everybody else down or to have a pity party, something like that, I don't think that's something that you should be bringing to work. Well, in my opinion, I mean, your work and your personal life they have to be separate. I mean, uh, let's what, talk to somebody who has emotion. <laughs> yeah. Drew, Drew doesn't actually have emotion. Why are Why don't you just not be upset? Well, well, yeah. Why don't you try? I, I actually did say that once uh, to, to JD, who was having a bad day, and I just said, "And why don't you just try not being upset?" Actually, I had just gone through a breakup, and I was very ups- upset about it. Yes. We, we weren't. We were happy that that breakup had yeah. happened. But um, see, for me, I mean, you're an extension of your employer's brand, and so if you're bringing your emotion into the workplace, you're affecting the workplace, and it's not just crying. You see, some people at, at work, they, they're getting worked up, they're getting anxious, they get angry, and they get they, like mean. They're they're yelling, they're shouting. Stuff like that as well. I mean, none of that is a positive environment. You're you're taking away from the creativity and positivity. Think of this though. Think of this. So they've they've there are actually studies. I know University of Minnesota did one, and there have been a couple others saying that after a good cry, you are actually in a better mood. And and also, if you try and repress those feelings. It can actually make you more stressed. It can lower your productivity, things like that. So maybe, well, maybe that's when you, um, you do know, it at excuse home. yourself for a few moments and you go to the, you know, restroom and. Well, you can't cry on your own cry. shoulder. Whose shoulder are you going to cry? Whoever's I'm in the very next flexible. stall. My neck is flexible. I can cry on my own shoulder. Can you imagine being at the urinal and the guy next to you just puts his head on your shoulder <laughs> and starts crying? Oh. No, all, right, I, all that being said, okay, I mean, what Drew has said is true, but you have to also remember that these are human beings. They're not robots, and everyone has things going on in their lives, and you have to have a little empathy for that once in a while. People are, are going to be upset from time to time or angry. I will admit, you know, I'm a rough-and-tumble contractor, yes, but when I'm doing the reveals on Property Brothers or on buying and selling, if the homeowners start to cry, even though it's tears of joy, if they start to cry... I can't help it. I That's different, though. That's completely different. That's a happy moment, and everyone's it's emotional, and, and there's a little bit of tears there. That's one thing. But if you're say in a, in your you know in your office and you have all the cubicles around, and then all of a sudden you have uh, someone breaking down and crying, and then they're they're just saying, well, they're, they're, they start saying to the person next to them a sob story of something in their life, which I'm saying it's too bad that that's happening. But if you affect that person next to you, and then another person overhears this, or you have the angry guy that starts yelling at, on the phone about somebody, then he starts bitching to the guy next to him about it, you are completely 
putting a negative influence into the office space. That is not the same thing as you getting emotional over a happy reveal. This is why Drew always has an office off away from everyone I don't want to hear the tears. <laughs> okay, well, here, I'll, let's do a little role-playing. We're in an office. You know, picture like a nine to five office somewhere. If you had a female colleague who just all of a sudden started crying in front of you, Drew, what do you do? I would. I would go over and see if there's something that I can do to help her or see what the situation is. But that's another one of my points. Now I'm being pulled away from what I should be doing for work because somebody is trying to. And a lot of times people do this as a as a shout out. They're doing this to to grab attention. They want attention. Well, so that's one scenario. Take the business thing out of it. You as a human being, if you I would saw go, another person crying, I would go to see if they're okay and if I can help them. Okay. And so if, if – because I, I do know uh, it just happens. Sometimes the emotions can get the best of us. And, um, you know, especially with, you know, some you know ex-girlfriends that I've had and stuff like that, sometimes they've said that they don't know why, they don't know what triggers it, but all of a sudden they are bawling their eyes out and they don't even know why. As long as it's not all the time, you know, I, I think that – you have to set boundaries and you have to realize, okay, most of the time I have to be productive and working. And But once in a while, I think that everyone has a moment. And Would that, you let somebody wipe their nose on your sleeve? I have. I've, I've had that weird slug trail down my sleeve. Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> but what I would say, though, is when you want to have that, if you're going to have that moment because you don't plan for it, like like you mentioned, JD, step out of the office or or ha- you know on your lunch break, you get away somewhere that you can vent or whatever you need to do, and then come back. It is not right for you to disrupt the workplace with, with that sort of emotion. I schedule my cry time at night around <laughs> eleven o'clock p.m. Yeah. Oh, so what, so does your girlfriend. <laughs> this is, I think, also though where the manager has to take a little bit of onus. And if you realize that one of your employees is feeling this way you have to step in be supportive but maybe that is when you tell them to take a break you know why don't you take good point. 30 minutes and go uh you know well, well it's a, a, being a prime example because you know you look at somebody if somebody becomes ill with a cold or the flu or something like that you don't want them coming into the workplace and infecting everybody else so a responsible manager will send that person home yeah it's the same with mental health yeah. if someone's having a mental if they need a mental health day you need to let that person go and and sort of get things all together and and it will just like a cold it'll come in and it will affect everybody else in the yeah workplace. but that's a, a perfect example especially with, with, with sick days as well mental health days or sick days there are people in most work environments that will ruin it for everybody else because they'll take advantage of that and they'll put on uh, that they're, they're they're upset or they'll make up a story or they'll pretend that they're sick to take those days and that's what ruins it for everybody else. That's why it has to be within reason though, and that's where the manager also has to determine. Okay, if you're this person taking advantage of it, then it's time to sit down and have a meeting with them. I mean, I know how I deal with my emotions, and that is I smash out an old kitchen. Most people don't <laughs> have the luxury of demo at the workplace, so you have to look at. I guess everything. I mean, and so I think it's safe to say that it really just depends on where you work, what kind of a relationship you have with your boss and your coworkers, and not every situation is going to lend itself to extreme emotion. Basically, cry on Jonathan's shoulder, not mine. <laughs> when we return, we're talking to our resident entertainment reporter, Michelle Mahone, about some classy, classless, and trashy celebrity stories. You're listening to Off Topic with the Scott Brothers on the Chorus Radio Network. This is Off Topic with the Scott Brothers on the Chorus Radio Network. Back on Off Topic with the Scott Brothers, I'm Jonathan. I'm Drew. And I'm JD. And every couple of weeks, we like to catch up with uh, Michelle Mahone, our resident entertainment and Hollywood reporter, to talk about what's classy, classless, and trashy stories in Hollywood. Uh, so, Thanks for joining us, What Michelle? we got going on, Michelle? Well, thanks for having me, guys. Okay, we are going to start off with some classy. That would be Bruce Springsteen. He did this benefit called Stand Up for Heroes up to the Madison Square Garden in New York City. He sold the guitar off of his shoulder. It fetched $250,000. Okay, and when the bidding got a little bit slow, he said, okay, I'll throw in a one-hour guitar lesson, one-on-one, and... Uh, they can go into his New Jersey home for a recording session. Honey, wow. I'd have given wow. him a kidney for that. With the boss. That would have been awesome. <laughs> Pick an organ. I mean, I, I tried to give the same thing out. I was going to sign a guitar, and, uh, and, and people offered me $5. In fact, people wanted me to pay them to give them a guitar signed by me. Yeah, well, I, 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 my couch. I'll, I, I'll I offered it. years ago, uh, people don't realize that uh, Drew and I actually play the bagpipes. I offered to give a bagpipe lesson to somebody, and uh, I was shut down. The neighbors didn't want it. <laughs> all right, if you wear a kilt and play a bagpipe, I will pay you all kinds of money. <laughs> but you're, but you're warp and twisted, so, you know. Yeah. 
That's all right. That's pretty great. He was able to raise two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars for U.S. soldiers. I mean, who, that's who was awesome. in the crowd? Who in the audience could? Ah, I've got two hundred fifty grand on me. I got a quarter mil sitting in my pot. Who, who was it that was bidding on this stuff? It, they didn't say. I mean, it, it obviously wasn't the soldiers, but they. It was a big gala. They had John Stewart and Bill Cosby and Jerry Seinfeld. It was like a big hoorah. So probably one of their friends. Wow. Mm-hmm. Actually, I saw. Yeah, I saw a bit saying that Seinfeld was there, but. I'm sure that's a pretty powerful crowd of people when that's yeah. when that's who's in the audience. I think Jerry can afford it. Yeah, yeah, most that's likely. Cool. Yeah. And so, what what about some class lists? Do I even oh. have to ask who's on the list? I tell, I have a feeling Kanye is probably. It's always Kanye. <laughs> I don't know. Yep, that would be it. Kanye West <laughs> and Kim Kardashian. How did you are psychic? Okay, they think that they are going to be the most powerful power couple on the planet. And he said that they were, are going to top Jay-Z and Beyonce. Jay-Z is a good friend of his. Okay, so it's all part of the grand plan. He told Kim to change her hair color, okay, because that's going to elevate her from a reality star into an international superstar. Nah. That's and all it he, takes. Ugh. Oh, yeah, I'm going to color my hair right now, just class it up a bit. But I just, I don't know, if his ego ever explodes, there will be a mushroom cloud over wherever he is. He's delusional. He's, he's extremely delusional. The, uh, the, the funny thing is, I, you'll notice season two of Property Brothers, the ratings went up because I changed my hair color. <laughs> so, you know, maybe I, it does work. I, just, I thought it, it was the assless chaps you wore in that third episode. <laughs> There's that as well. That, uh, that definitely affected us one way or another. But I, I just get so it. frustrated looking at Kanye and the stupid things that come out of his mouth. Like, you, you know, you're going to get have, hate mail. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get some hate <laughs> mail. But Jay Z is one of the most intelligent businessmen in their industry. He's such a smart guy. And, and just because you keep telling everybody, I'm amazing, I'm amazing, I'm bigger than Jesus doesn't mean that you are going to be that. I think it's annoying that, that uh, some people feel that if they just say it long enough, people will believe it. Well, that's, that's what Kanye does every time he gets a chance in any interview. But isn't Jay-Z Kanye's boss? Isn't Jay-Z, isn't it his label that produces Kanye? I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, I thought, you know, it was, it was hilarious to me because thinking back to, um, you know, there was, uh, he jumped up there on stage, Kanye, one year, and he, he said that to, during Taylor Swift's acceptance speech, he's like, you know, Beyonce had a much better album. She oh, deserved this award. So awkward. Beyonce was sitting there with Jay-Z, mortified, yeah. and, you know, you could see in Kanye's eyes, he's like, yeah, I'm, I, this is awesome. That They're going to love that I'm standing up for them. No, right. that's embarrassing. You have to respect the fellow people that you have in your industry. And when you're coming out there and you're flat out calling out someone who's not only just your friend, but also who is sort of a mogul in the industry, and you're saying, I'm going to be bigger than this person, that's just flat out rude. Kanye has been a talker since the beginning, but he seems to be getting worse. Like I, The stuff that he's been saying lately just is out of this world. Like he, He's on something. I, I don't even know what to say about it. All right, let's well, jump over to... Well, for me, it's fantastic. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm going to send him a fruit basket. I, I, figure, I, I just figure that slowly he's moving through our categories here. You know, he's in classless now. I think he's going to move over to trashy probably pretty soon. So what do we have for trashy? All right, trashy. We got us some Charlie Sheen. Okay. Are you keeping up with the whole custody thing with his... Uh, Unfortunately, yes. Mueller. Yeah, okay. It, this is getting really bad. Well, Denise has been watching the boys, but... She can't do anything with him. She has no legal say in any kind of treatment or medical attention. And the boys are just cutting a rusty at her house, attacking her three daughters and the family dogs. So she had to call an emergency meeting between Brooke and Family Social Services. And it looks like Brooke, after 20 Stays in rehab, two while she was pregnant, a 5150 psychiatric hold in May, and overdosing on crystal meth. She's about to regain full custody of her twins. So Charlie needs to lay off the hookers and get his boys and be a man. The ironic part is that Charlie Sheen plays a therapist on his show. That's so I, bizarre. The anger man is, but did you see his tweet that he put out last week? I don't know if I can say douchebags, but he called the family social services people douchebags. He called uh, Brooke a horrible name that I can't repeat, and he's in a show called Anger Management. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's kind of sad, but it's it's doubly sad for those kids that they have to uh, 
pick between Charlie Sheen or Brooke. Well, <laughs> and I, I hate how you take something that is it, it's a very tough thing for the you know family services and the stuff that they go through. They obviously want to take kids out of this bad situation, but it turns into a whole circus, and you know it's played out in front of the general public, and then almost I, I feel like sometimes they're doing this for the ratings that they keep aggravating the situation. So yep, now the boys are with Brooke's brother. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Yep. Well, I think that we, we, we've pretty much covered off the uh, classy, classless, and trashy for this week. Uh, no no huge surprises. I'm boys in those uh, kilt and bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's trashy. Oh, don't forget, you can always find us on Twitter. I'm Mr. J.D. Scott. Drew is Mr. Drew Scott. And Jonathan is Mr. Silver Scott. And also on our website, thescottbrothers.com. Well, we also will be right back with one of our favorite segments, Would You Rather?, Thanks very much for uh, helping us out with our gossip, Michelle, and we'll talk to you again soon. You're listening to Off Topic with the Scott Brothers on the Chorus Radio Network. You're listening to Off Topic with the Scott Brothers on the Chorus Radio Network. We're just about out of time for Off Topic this week, but before we go, we did something a little while ago that was very popular. We're going to try it one more time here. It's called Would You Rather? And that's that game where we pick three things that we like to have in our lives and decide which one we could go a month without. It's tough. You wouldn't think it's as tough as it, as, as it, it turned out to be. And the last time we played, we actually had alcohol, sex, and your cell phone. And I still haven't had any sex. I, you, wait, we, we're actually doing that, right? That was what yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, of course. Actually, that's what a lot of people wrote into me and said that I should actually just give up the sex thing. And uh, I said to my girlfriend, there's no way I could ever do that. <laughs> Uh, so I gave up my cell phone. Do you guys believe me? No. 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 <laughs> You're actually on your cell phone right now. I can see. Yeah. It. yeah. But that, we, with, it was with those suggestions that we came up with the one this week. And so uh, somebody had said, well, you guys are always on the computer. You're always on your laptops. Would you rather give up your laptop? Would you give up your car as your main mode of pr- transportation? Or would you give up sushi? Those are three things hmm. that are near and dear to me. So what do you think? Well, for me, I think actually the car would be the easiest because the fact is I'm on the road so much. I'm not even at home. I don't have a car on the road. So that would be an easy one for me to give up. Yeah. I, you walked here today? Uh, well, I actually brought your car today. But, uh, <laughs> <I know. laughs> normally, I, I take an Uber. Yeah. So that's know. exactly. Yeah. And I use Uber as well. So when you have a, a, a car service like that that's affordable, it's convenient, great service, um, that works for me. But that's a cop out. All right. Let's, let's, I'm changing the rules here. I'm changing the subject. So it's, would you rather give up your laptop? Would you rather give up any car? So all you could do is maybe a green option, like a bicycle or a walk, something like that. The bus? Or, or the bus, yeah, okay. the bus. Or would you give up sushi? Okay, I would have to say um, I'm just not a fan of public transportation. I don't like it myself. Um, I, so I would want to keep my car. So I would, I would give up sushi. What is it you don't like about public transportation? Every time I go on a bus or a train or something, there is always a jerk that's on the train, and it's not me. There's always a jerk that's on there. That Are they crying? Yeah. There's, no, there's somebody bullying somebody else. Like, Or you'll see somebody's being really loud and arrogant with people around them, and everyone's afraid to say something, and I'm too outspoken to let somebody do that. And so I will go over and say, hey – Leave these people alone, or what are you doing? I had this one guy was berating these three elderly women, and they were scared, and nobody, not even the bus driver was saying anything. So I threw the guy off the, the bus. Well, I don't like to get physical or anything like that, but it just drives me insane. Do you wear a leotard under your suit? Yes, yeah, I'm a superhero. <laughs> I, uh, I, for me, what I don't like about public transportation is the fact that I have to be in so many specific places all the time, um, that it takes you too far out of the way. Like, it takes too long to get there. Obviously, it would be a lot harder for me to haul my tools around <laughs> on the bus. So that that would be hard for me. I, don't, I, I couldn't necessarily give up. So the sushi or computer? Well, I, if I was to give up sushi, I think I, would, I, think I actually would fizzle up and die. So <laughs> that would be pretty tricky. Uh, the computer... I don't, I, don't, I don't even use my computer. Honestly, most of the work I do, I do on my, my phone. So... I, I think I would it would be easier for me to give up my laptop. Huh, which I couldn't do. I, it would still be the vehicle for me. And yeah, I, you game on your laptop. All oh, the yeah. Time. I'm, not, I'm not giving up well, my, so my game. I would say this then instead because J.D. doesn't really use his car a lot because he's on the road. So what if, J.D., you had to give up your gaming, sushi, or eight hours of sleep per night? 
Oh, games I could give up. Easy. You don't even get eight hours of sleep every night, JD. You could not give up gaming. JD does this all the time. He says, oh, no, no, I'm not playing a game, as I catch him playing a game all the time. In the background. No, no, I, I, not, uh, at the end of my day, that's how I relax. I play, I play this game online. I'll do an hour of it, and I like it. But I don't need to do it. It it's, hap- just, it's it my treat. Be, it's a four-hour hour that he, he plays that game. I wish. <laughs> Something like that. I, I'm the worst, actually. I... For all I know, you're you're checking emails because I, I don't play any games or anything like that. So and I'll have you know when it's not the game, it's porn. Oh, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> good. Uh, actually, let's make it even more challenging for you, JD, so you can pick what it is. So either you have to give up any mode of transportation other than public transit or walking, or you have to give up your laptop and all gaming, or you have to give up sushi and bacon. Ah, uh, well, this brings in actually. I saw numerous people this week saying online, "JD, you should try and give up bacon." And um, I could, I could do that. Like, I, I could give up bacon and sushi, I guess, for a month. You know, like, what is wrong uh, with you? You, I would want to. But... I think he would not be pleasant to be around if he did that. Jonathan, I saw someone post on on your social media. They said, "Jonathan, would you give up your hair product? <laughs> would you give up your tools?" Or would you give, oh, what was the third one? Would you give, oh, it was sushi as well. Or would you give up sushi? Contractually, I don't think he can give up his hair products. <laughs> uh, no, or my tools. Um, can I give up my twin? Is that, is that possible? <laughs> Am I considered a tool? If, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, I don't know. It's tricky. I like, the, I like that game. I hope that people send more suggestions in because there's, there's got to be some more creative things. Things that we don't realize how reliant on we are. So... I don't know. Send some more information into us. You know how to hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. I'm at Mr. Silver Scott. We've got at Mr. JD Scott, at Mr. Drew Scott, and of course on our website at thescottbrothers.com. Thanks for listening to Off Topic with the Scott Brothers on the Chorus Radio Network. Let's all chat again next week. You've been listening to Off Topic with the Scott Brothers on the Chorus Radio Network. Want more of the Scots? Check them out on TV. Catch the Property Brothers and buying and selling on W, a Chorus Entertainment Company. 